empty wine bottles and overflowing ashtrays littered my apartment. For the past two weeks, our flat had become an open house, with wild parties continuing for three or four days without stopping. Since Friday, I had promised myself that come Monday morning, the party would end. At long last, I had got the last drunk started down the stairs. It had taken over an hour to get rid of all of them, but now I could sigh with relief. Now with dawn breaking through the early darkness, I watched from my window the working men of the neighborhood preparing to depart for work. Milton's father, dirty as usual, stood in the street beside his car talking to one of the neighbors. I watched him with disdain. His coveralls were grimy with filth. The old model car he drove matched its owner in shabbiness. My gaze flickered to my Cadillac. There was a feeling of triumph inside of me. I wasn't even half his age and I had already accomplished more than he ever would. Milton's mother could look down her fat nose at me if she wanted to pretend, but we both knew who had the sweetest end of the stick. Exaltation overcame me as I turned and watched Diane dumping ashtrays. With my chest pushed out with pride, I walked over to the bedroom and opened the door. Boots and Vera were both laid out side by side. They had danced so much over the past few days that they were just worn out. Diane, why you ain't in bed getting some rest, girl? I asked quietly. You know I'm sending you to work later on today. She looked up from her cleaning and smiled shyly. I just want to clean this mess up a little, Daddy, she answered innocently. A good pimp should try and know what his whores are thinking. Sometimes you will put in an awkward spot, but most of the times you can guess just about what they have on their mind. Quit lying, bitch, I replied coldly. I know the only reason your lazy ass is up, faking like you working, is on the slim chance that I'll give you some meat this morning when I go to bed. Her eyes dropped and she tried to look, but just as quickly she rushed over and hugged me. You gonna do a little something for me this morning? Ain't you, horse son? This was an ideal time to act chilly, but my defense was weakening. She was light chocolate and her skin was as smooth as a baby's ass. When she smiled and looked up at me with her big bedroom eyes, I couldn't refrain from taking her in my arms and kissing those tender lips. As she pressed her young body against me, I knew that fate had dealt me a terrible blow. I had been gifted with a tender dick. Bending over, I caught her legs and carried her towards the other bedroom. Her body had the smell of fresh roses, and her arms around me had the same effect as alcohol to senses. When our bodies met, a shock of electricity went through my mind. We were caught up in the passion of youth, and my excitement exceeded all bounds. Later, with Diane snuggled against me gently snoring, I shuddered with horror at the thought of having to leave every morning for a job. I had never had a job, and because of my environment and training, plus my dexterity at getting money, employment was unnecessary. My stable was growing. My mind wandered to the other two girls in the house, Boots and Vera. Now that I had three girls, it wouldn't be long before I was the best young pimp in the city. Here I was at 17 with three of the youngest, wildest, and fastest whores in the country. How sweet it was. Pimpin' really had his good points. With the passing of Christmas and the following holidays, I was in good shape for the new year. Boots was able to go back to work, so I stopped her from doing any more boosting. Her boosting bloomers were packed away for later use. Many pimps would disagree with me because quite a few pimps would rather have a booster than a whore. But to me, at this stage of my life, 
I didn't want anything but a flat back in whore. The neighborhood theater, which went by the name of Duke, used to put on talent shows every Saturday afternoon. Since I was too young for the bars, I'd dress my three ladies up, get the car washed, and make my grand appearance. Amidst much head-turning, abdulation from the young would-be pimps in the audience. Eight, with a few more of my old gang, will have two rows of seats saved down in front for the selected ones in our crowd. My girls enjoyed the abdulation as we walked slowly towards our seats. My popularity was rising. The fastest young girls in the neighborhood would crowd down near our row trying to catch my eye. This theater was to become the best establishment in the city for meeting potential prostitutes. One Saturday, while sitting down front, crowded in between many admirers, a group came out on the stage and swept the spotlight from me with their swinging arrangements. I stared in wonder at young Janet. She was still singing and getting better than ever. I watched her capture the crowd with song after song. The audience wouldn't let them leave the stage. Every time they tried to leave, the crowd would become so unruly that the owner would call them back on the stage. After doing one more number, Janet must have decided to put a stop to the commotion herself. She came down off the stage, followed closely by the two girls who sang with her. She stopped in front of me and leaned over. Whore son, how about trying to get us out of here, she yelled in my ear. Don't worry, baby, I said, standing up. I can handle it, I replied with more confidence than I felt. The crowd was really yelling and kids were crowding onto the aisle. I had grave doubts about whether I could get them out. One thing kept ringing in my mind, though. This young girl had a star written all over her, and I meant to shine bright in her eyes. Embracing Janet, I pulled one of her trembling girlfriends into my other arm. Catching Boots' eye, I yelled, See if you can get Ape and some of the fellas to clear a path, baby. She nodded and ran over to him. With Ape and five more of the bunch in front of her, Boots started breaking through the crowd, with us right behind. With kicks and punches, they soon had kids climbing seats to get out of the way. Finally, we reached the protection of my car. All the girls piled in. I gave Ape enough cash for cab fare and some weed before driving off. You can drop us off anywhere, horse son, Janet said quietly. I smiled and kept on driving. I know you ain't going to be rude enough to refuse an invitation to my place, Janet. She sighed and settled back against the seat, compelled to accept my offer. My apparent refusal to stop long enough to let them out. Within 30 minutes after our arrival, the capacity of my house was being tested. 